Do different testosterone levels influence cardiovascular disease or mortality? New study just landed on my desk, so let's talk about what we have here. This one is from the Annals of Internal Medicine, and it's called the Associations of Testosterone and Related Hormones with All-Cause and Cardiovascular Mortality and Incident Cardiovascular Disease in Men. The data used in this study was a compilation of studies taken from a systematic review, and all the criteria included community-dwelling men, that's people like you and me just living our lives out there, and it followed these men for five years. And it wanted to evaluate what were the incidences of cardiovascular events, what were the incidence of cancer, dementia, what were the incidence of all-cause mortality. And then they want to stratify these men into different, different tertiaries of testosterone levels. Not only were the men stratified into different five different groups of testosterone levels, but they also looked at their levels of SHBG, estradiol, DHT and luteinizing hormone, and also put that into five different uh, five different stratifications to see if there were also any correlations or differences in terms of incidences of cardiovascular events, cardiovascular disease, all cause mortality, and all other stuff. So there were five different quintiles that the men were placed in, and this is based on their testosterone levels. So the first quintile is considered the lowest, and that was 244 nanograms per deciliter for their total testosterone. The second quintile was 340 nanograms per deciliter. The third quintile was 423 nanograms per deciliter. The fourth quintile was 523 nanograms per deciliter. And the fifth quintile, which was considered the highest quintile, was 706 nanograms per deciliter for the total testosterone. What the researchers found was there appears to be an inverse relationship with your baseline testosterone level and all-cause mortality. In other words, what they found was the participants who had the lowest or the first quintile of uh, testosterone, total testosterone levels, had higher incidences of all-cause mortality. And the participants in the highest quintile, the fifth one, which is the quintile in which you have the best baseline testosterone, had less incidence of all-cause mortality. In this study, when it comes to total testosterone, hazard ratios of less than one were considered more favorable. And as you look at each category, whether it's all-cause mortality, cardiovascular death, or incidence cardiovascular disease, as you start on the lowest quintile of testosterone, which is 244 nanograms a deciliter, and progress to the highest quintile, you can see the all-cause mortality or the hazard ratios, they actually improve, which corroborates with what the authors of the study were saying. What's even more interesting is that the men who had low testosterone and high normal or even overtly high SHBG values, those men had an even greater risk of all-cause mortality. Now, if you understand how this works, if they have very low testosterone, total testosterone that is, and a high SHBG, that means not only is their total testosterone very low, it also means their free testosterone is very low. Now, one big caveat of this study is that these were, this is data taken from men who are not on testosterone replacement therapy. These are men who this is their natural endogenous production of testosterone. Now, can we extrapolate some of this cardiovascular data to guys that are on TRT? Chances are, I would say most likely, probably, yeah. And in my opinion, testosterone really is not harmful for you or going to harm you in terms of cardiovascular health or, you know, metabolic health or anything like that. I think testosterone is perfectly healthy, especially when overseen and administered in a very therapeutic fashion. There's more and more evidence coming out in the last decade, last two decades, showing that testosterone is in fact, it's, it's cardioprotective, it's neurologically protective, it's metabolically protective, and quite frankly, I don't think testosterone is the boogeyman that people make it out to be. Anyway, hope you enjoy this quick recap of this recap of this little study, and we'll see you next time.